Welcome to part 2 of the lecture on machine independent optimizations. Today, we will continue our discussion on uh, data flow analysis. So, we covered uh, illustrations of code optimizations in the last part. To do a bit of uh, recap, a data flow value for a program point represents an abstraction of the set of all possible program states that can be observed for that point. So, the, <coughs> the, the issue is when the program is executing at every point in the program, there may be several possible program states and uh, when we do a data flow analysis, we are statically examining the program. So, we compute uh, an abstraction of uh, this set. So, that is an approximation of this set. In other words, it is possible that this approximation includes uh, certain program states which can never be reached at that point in an actual execution, but because of our static analysis this uh, extra information will be included in the abstraction. The second important point is the set of all that the set of all possible data flow values is the domain of for the application under consideration. So, for each one of the applications this uh, domain is going to be different. For the reaching definitions for example, it would be sets of all subsets of definitions and for the available expressions it would be the sets of all subsets of expressions. For the live variables problem it would be the sets of all set of all subsets of uh, variables etcetera. <coughs> We also have uh, two quantities in and out. So, these are the data flow values before and after each statement yes and as I mentioned we are going to be interested in a larger grain size that is uh, a basic block rather than just uh, a single statement. The data flow problem is to find a solution to a set of constraints on in and s uh, sets. <coughs> So, what kind of constraints can we provide? We provide two types of constraints. The constraints based on the semantics of statements are called transfer functions and the constraints based on the flow of control are also going to be provided. That is if there is a join of different paths in a program then what do we de do about the computation of in and out that is going to be the question to be answered. So, a data flow schema consists of five components one is the control flow graph itself then a direction of uh, data flow forward or backward has to be indicated a set of uh, data flow values is to be provided a confluence operator usually set union or set intersection should be given and the transfer functions for each basic block as I said instead of statement we are going to provide the transfer functions for each basic block will also be provided. <coughs> when we compute the estimates of data flow values that is the approximations or abstractions of data flow values we want to make sure that uh, these estimates are safe. So, again safety is with respect to a particular application. So, in our case we want to perform several optimizations. So, safety is with respect to these optimizations. So, an estimate is safe or conservative if it never leads to a change in what the program computes after the change is carried out in the program by a transformation. So, in other words if we perform an optimization then the optimized program should provide the same output as the unoptimized version. So, that is precisely what we mean by safety. So, in doing the optimization we would have used a lot of data flow information. So, and we would have made decisions on transformations using that data flow information. So, this uh, type of a decision is said to be safe if there is no change in what the program computes. So, this will become clear as we go on and take up uh, more examples. 
these safe values may be either sub, uh, subsets or supersets of actual values based on the application. So, to get into the uh, problem of reaching definition analysis. So, we need to define two quantities one is uh, what we mean by generation of a definition and uh, what we mean by killing a definition. So, we kill a definition of a variable a if between two points along the path there is an assignment to a. So, in a, uh, let us take up uh, this example. So, here we have uh, a equal to b plus c and later in the program in the same uh, you know program we have another definition a equal to k minus m. Obviously, a equal to k minus m and a equal to b plus c are both definitions of a and uh, uh, you know it is possible uh, suppose these two are in the same basic block. Okay. So, in such a case it, it, it is never possible for a equal to b plus c that is the value of a computed by this particular uh, definition to be available after the definition a equal to k minus m. This kind of uh, uh, overtakes the previous definition. So, in such a case we say that this definition kills this particular definition. Now, what is the definition of uh, reachability? What is a reaching definition? A definition d reaches a point p if there is a path from the point immediately following d to p such that d is not killed along that particular path. So, if there are uh, there may be many paths from d to p, but uh, we are only considering existence of uh, just one path. So, if there is more than one path it does not add to reachability, but if there is uh, no path then the definition is not reachable. So, from d we must be able to go to point p via a particular path that is all it really means. So, uh, if there is a path then the definition reaches the point p. So, uh, remember again more than one path uh, for the same definition does not add to reachability, but if there is no path from the definition to point p then the definition is not reachable. We must also distinguish between unambiguous and ambiguous definitions of a variable a equal to b plus c let all the three uh, a b and c three uh, entities be names. right? So, in such a case this is called as an unambiguous definition because we are explicitly defining the variable a. Later in the point of uh, in, the, in the program at some point we have a definition such as star p equal to d. This is called ambiguous definition of a the reason being p may point to many variables it may point to p it may point to b it may point to x. Therefore, we cannot uh, you know uh, concretely say that uh, p is defining a particular variable. Of course, if we already know that p points only to x then we can say p this statement defines a uh, you know is a definition for x, but uh, in general during static analysis we can only determine that p points to a couple of variables we can hardly say p points to exactly a particular variable. So, if this is so this is called ambiguous definition and because it does not uh, definitely define a particular variable we cannot say that uh, an ambiguous definition kills the previous definition. So, this does not kill anything ambiguous definitions do not kill any definitions, but this is unambiguous definition again a equal to k minus m. So, this kills uh, this unambiguous definition again this ambiguous definition you know may not kill this definition uh, ambiguous definition because p may never point to a. So, in that case this is not a definition of uh, a at all. So, we do not want to kill such definitions either. <coughs> then in the reaching definitions problem we as compute supersets of definitions as uh, conservative or safe values. So, as I said uh, you know we want to compute safe estimates. 
So, in this case a safe estimate would be a superset. What does it mean to compute a superset? So, it, it says it is safe to assume that a definition reaches a point even if it does not. So, this is what happens if we include more definitions into the set of reaching definitions than the definitions that actually reach. So, there may be some definitions which do not, but uh, it is ok to include them. This is our uh, definition of uh, you know safety here. So, for example, the let us say we have if a equal to b then a equal to 2 else if a equal to b then a equal to 4. So, let us analyze uh, what happens during execution. During execution we compare if a equal to b then uh, you know if it was true then we would have taken a equal to 2 and exited. Suppose a equal to b was false we would have taken the else part and we are comparing a equal to b again that means, if it was false here it has to be false here as well because we have not assigned anything to either a or b. So, this statement will never be executed right. So, at this point during actual execution a equal to 4 will never this definition of a will never reach this point during actual execution. But, uh, because we know that uh, you know by this execution path uh, we will never take this particular branch, okay. but static analysis does not know that. So, in static analysis we are going to assume that both a equal to 2 and a equal to 4 will reach the point after this semicolon. So, this is the conservative estimate. So, we know that during actual execution a equal to 4 will never reach this point, but uh, because of our static analysis we have no idea that uh, a and b you know we, we do not uh, uh, take the value of a equal to b here and then uh, use it here as well we do not do that in static analysis. So, we will have to assume that both a equal to 2 and a equal to 4 will reach this particular point after the semicolon. So, this is uh, an example of uh, uh, you know a superset that is being computed. So, here I present the data flow equations or constraints as they are called and I am going to explain these uh, equations in great detail in the coming slides. The first uh, constraint or the equation says in of a basic block that is the set of definitions reaching the entry point of a basic block that is what in b is will be a union of the out sets of all its predecessor blocks. So, p is a predecessor. So, this is what this says I will explain this very soon out b the set of definitions reaching the exit point of a basic block that is what out b is will be gen b the set of definitions generated by the basic block union in b minus skill b. So, in b is what is obtained from the top kill b is the definitions set of definitions killed by the basic block. So, remove from in b the set kill b and that will also be coming out of the basic block and in b is initialized to phi for all basic blocks. So, these are the constraints these are the equations. So, in these equations gen and kill are constants. So, they will be computed only once and then uh, they will not be modified again. And uh, I, uh, let me uh, go ahead with the definition of uh, gen and kill before I explain these equations. So, if some definitions reach b 1 then in of b 1 is initialized to that particular set instead of phi. This is a forward flow problem the nature of the flow is obtained using the equation for out. So, if the equation for out is in terms of uh, in then this is called as a forward flow problem. If the equation were turned out to be an equation for in in terms of out then it would become a backward flow problem. 
the direction of flow of the data flow values does not imply that we traverse the blocks in a particular order to compute the sets. No, any order is uh, fine with us and the final result does not depend on the order of traversal of the basic blocks either. I have still not told you how to compute this, uh, uh, how to compute the values for in and out. Typically, once we compute gen and kill, we compute in and out values in a loop you know we compute them again and again making sure that uh, we reach what is known as a fixed point. So, at the fixed point you know after we cross the fixed point the values of in and out do not change again for any basic block. So, it, for the reaching definitions problem the fixed point is guaranteed to be reached in a couple of uh, iterations. So, otherwise formally it is necessary for a new data flow analysis problem we will have to formally prove that uh, this sort of a thing fixed point can indeed be reached, but this is not a part of our course. So, we are not going to discuss the theory of uh, data flow analysis in this course. So, again just repeating that. So, we compute in and out sets again and again until a fixed point is reached. So, let me define gen and kill before I go on to the explanation of the two data flow equations. Gen B is the set of definitions inside the basic block that are visible immediately after the block. They are called as the downwards exposed definitions. So, let me explain that. Suppose a variable x has uh, only one definition in the block, okay. then obviously, the definition will be downwards exposed used uh, you know and exposed and it will be visible immediately after the block. But suppose the variable x has two or more definitions in the block then only the last definition of x is uh, downwards exposed and the others are not visible outside the block. So, this is what uh, it is important we actually take the last definition of uh, the variable. So, we can even compute gen b by doing a traversal from the end of the basic block to the beginning of the basic block no problem with that. So, kill b is the union of the definitions in all the basic blocks of the flow graph that are killed by the individual statements in B. So, in other words uh, if a variable x has a definition d i in a basic block then d i kills all the definitions of the variable x in the whole program except of course, d i. My picture in the next slide will explain this in a better fashion. Suppose we consider a basic block B we want to compute the gen and kill for this particular basic block. As I said gen and kill will be computed just once and they will be used again and again. The basic block has 5 uh, you know 4 definitions d 1, d 2, d 3 and d 4. So, d 1 defines a, d 2 defines b, d 3 defines c and d 4 defines a again. And in other basic blocks of the program there are uh, many other definitions d 5, d 6, d 7, d 8, d 9 and d 10. So, the set of all definitions in the program would be d 1 to d 10 right. So, 4 here and the next 6 in the other blocks. So, this is our universal set of all the definitions. To compute gen, so let us uh, look at the various definitions d 2 and d 3 compute uh, b and c they are the only definitions of b and c in the basic block. So, d 2 and d 3 will be definitely included in the gen set they are generated by the basic block. Now, d 1 is a definition of a d 4 is also a definition of a, but as is very obvious this definition the value here will not be visible after the redefinition of uh, a this is uh, you know just ordinary program sense. So, it is d 4 which will be visible outside the basic block at this point and not d 1. So, we include only d 4 in the set of uh, generated definitions of the basic block b. What about the kill set? Computing the kill set is a little tricky. So, what we need to do is consider each definition in the basic block, then consider all the definitions of the variable a in the entire program. 
So, we have we have a definition uh, you know which is d 4 here which is the definition of a. We also have the definition d 9 which is also a definition of a. So, our definition of kill says take d 1 then it kills both d 4 and d 9. So, we include d 4 and d 9 in the kill set. Then d 2 defines b. So, it kills uh, d 5 in the other basic block. So, d 5 gets included in the kill set. Then we have uh, d 3 which defines c. So, it kills d 10 which is also included in the kill set. Now, we come to d 4 which is a definition of a. So, it kills not d 1 and uh, d 9, d 9 has already been included in the set. So, only d 1 gets included in the kill set. Why are we uh, you know computing the kill set in this fashion? Even though we do not consider whether there is a control flow from this basic block to any other basic block which uh, defines that variable or not. The answer is simple we are computing gen and kill before the reaching definitions problem is uh, solved. To compute the exact kill set in fact, uh, to check whether there is a flow from one uh, basic block to another and so on and so forth. We may end up solving the reaching definitions problem or a variant of it before we compute the exact kill set. That is the one first reason why we have such a big set of uh, definitions for the kill. The second reason is even if we include many definitions which are not relevant to the basic block B in the kill set, it is not going to actually affect our uh, computation of uh, in and out. So, because of this it is immaterial whether the kill set is a superset of the actual values or definitions killed or is it the exact kill set that really does not matter to us. So, I hope this clarifies uh, the computation of gen and kill. Now, let us move on to the data flow equations. So, we have uh, two equations here one is the inset of the basic block B is the union of the outsets of the basic block uh, predecessors of B. So, this is the meaning we want to compute the inset of uh, the basic block B 4. There are three predecessors to this basic block B 4 B 1, B 2 and B 3. So, there are three sets here out B 1, out B 2 and out B 3. So, in of B 4 will be the union of out B 1, out B 2 and out B 3. This is actually quite intuitive. The reason is we you know uh, suppose uh, we consider the set of definitions reaching this point that is out of B 1. From here to here there is nothing to stop the definitions from reaching right. So, all the definitions which reach this point will take this edge and reach this point as well. So, all the definitions of out B 1 should be included in the in B 4 set the same is true for out B 2 and out B 3 as well. So, this is the intuitive reason why we take a union here. The other reason you know the actually uh, what happens is uh, the reaching definitions problem we are not really worried about uh, the definition reaching along all paths. We are interested in knowing whether the definition reaches along at least one path. So, it may reach along this path or this path or this path. So, reaching along any one of the paths is fine for us. Uh, in fact, if it reaches along this path and does not reach along these two paths we are still happy. That is the reason why we want to take the union of all the definitions which reach this particular basic block. Then what about the computation of uh, out? out of B is computed as uh, gen B union in B minus kill B. Let me explain why this is so. We have the same basic block B 4. 
there is a set in V 4 which is already computed let us say using this equation. Now, the set gen and kill has already been computed we want to compute the outset. So, here are some values given for in and uh, gen kill. So, let us say the uh, set in B 4 is uh, P Q Z the gen set is A comma B and the kill set is uh, Z. We need to you know uh, take the gen values and put them in the outset that is very clear because uh, whatever is computed within the basic block before obviously, by definition reaches the end of the basic block and that will be in the outset. So, that is the explanation for including gen of before in the outset. The second is the in part there are lots of definitions reaching this point right the in part and a few of them get uh, destroyed because of the kill set why there are definitions which are coming in then some of these variables will be you know redefined here. So, that def those def you know the definitions corresponding to those variables in the inset will all be will have to be removed. So, that is why uh, recall the definition of kill if z is defined here then it z kill that definition kills all the definitions corresponding to z right. So, I have not named the definitions here let us assume that these are the variables just for the sake of example. Really speaking I should have given the definitions numbers corresponding to these variables, but uh, it helps if we actually keep the variables for the sake of under here. So, let us assume that there is uh, one definition corresponding to z here you know another definition corresponding to this z another definition corresponding to a one more corresponding to b etcetera etcetera. So, the outset now will contain the definitions corresponding to a and b of course, it will also contain the definitions corresponding to p and q because they are not killed and the definitions corresponding to z will all be removed from the inset and that is the reason why this has only a b p and so, this is how we uh, compute the uh, outset in terms of uh, gen and kill gen kill and in. So, remember if the kill set contains certain uh, you know definitions then they will be removed from the inset that is what this really means. So, we have removed the definitions of uh, z from here we have included the definitions of p and q only the definitions of a and b only. So, the outset will contain a b p and q. So, that is what this equation says include the definitions of gen take away the kill set from in and include it in the outset of b 4. Let us take a big example and this has been adopted from the book by Aho, Sethi and Rulman. So, the first thing to do is to compute the gen and kill sets and then make initializations appropriately. So, let us do that this basic block has three definitions d 1 d 2 d 3. So, computing gen here we would include d 1 d 2 d 3 in the gen set that is very obvious because they are all visible here. And uh, kill set of b 1 you know if you consider the definition d 1 it kills all the definitions with i. So, it kills d 4 right and uh, then it kills d 7 as well. So, d 4 and d 7 are included in the kill set. The second definition d 2 corresponds to with a variable j. So, it kills the definition d 5. So, that is also included in the kill set the third definition corresponds to variable a. So, it kills the definition d 6 involving a. So, that is also included in the kill set. So, this is the computation of gen and kill. Initialization in of b 1 is made phi and in fact, in uh, in the practical implementation we can uh, say that out b will be initialized to gen because of this equation right. So, ignore this part 
we will still include uh, a minimum of gen b in any out computation. So, we can initialize out b to the gen z d 1 d 2 d 3 in this case. Coming to b 2, this is a bit tricky, gen is easy. So, d 4 and d 5 are being uh, defined here, kill again uh, you know look at the uh, variable i and the definitions of i elsewhere. So, there is d 1 here then uh, you know we have d 7. So, and then corresponding to j we have d 2. So, all the three are included in the kill set. And then the in set is uh, phi and the out set is initialized to d 4 d 5. So, you must observe here that the value of i which is used on the right hand side of this assignment actually arrives from the value i here you know the old value i here or the value here. Okay. This is a new value which is computed and uh, the same is true for j. This j arrives from this particular uh, value and then of course, after it is computed it will also arrive via the loop. Okay. The third basic block gen is just uh, d 6 and uh, kill corresponds to the definition of a which is d 3 in will be phi and out will be d 6. Gen of b 4 is d 7 and kill of b 4. So, we look at the definition of i. So, that would be d 4 and then we also have d 1. So, these are the two definitions which are killed. So, it is very probably very clear that uh, you know uh, d 1 will never reach this particular uh, point here you know it never reaches here. The reason is uh, it is redefined already at this point. So, we must compulsorily take this path. So, only d 4 will perhaps reach this point it will d 1 will never reach this point. So, this is not a relevant definition as far as the kill set is concerned, but uh, as I said since we cannot compute exact kill sets without solving the reaching definitions or similar problem we take a superset and it is not going to matter to us. So, now pass 2. So, this was the old value of uh, in and out gen and kill do not change old values of in and out are here these are the new values. What does the new value require? The equations are here. So, the in set is a union of the out sets of the predecessors. So, in this case uh, there is nothing coming from here. So, in b will always remain phi always. What about out b? You have to include a part of uh, you know one part is corresponding to gen which is already included that is d 1 d 2 d 3 and the in set corresponding to this is phi. So, there is nothing to take away and uh, this is the old value of in b right it is phi and therefore, we still have d 1 d 2 d 3 as the uh, out set here. So, so far from here to here there is no change. But once we consider uh, b 2 we see changes these are the old values of in and out. So, when we compute the new value of in for this particular basic block b 2 we take the union of the two out sets coming from b 1 and another coming from b 4. So, the out set of uh, b 1 okay, here so, that would be d 2 d 1 d 2 d 3 and the out set of uh, b 4 is d 7 and therefore, the in set of uh, b 2 would be d 1 d 2 d 3 d 7 it is the union of the two. So, uh, remember the old value was phi and the new value is different even though there was no change of anything here there has been a change here. So, what about the out value of uh, b 2? Obviously, as usual the gen value d 4 d 5 gets included in the outset then we take the in value and remove the kill value. So, if we do that you know uh, in b 2 is d 1 d 2 d 3 d 7 kill b 2 is d 1 d 2 d 7. So, only d 3 remains and that gets included into b 2. So, d 3 
is still uh, irrelevant it goes through ok. Whereas, uh, d 1 and d 2 are not relevant because they are being redefined here that is quite intuitive for us. Then the basic block uh, b 3 again the in value is phi out value is d 6 whereas, here the in value will be the new out value of b 2 the new out value of uh, b 2 is d 3 d 4 d 5. So, the new in value of uh, b 3 will become d 3 d 4 d 5 it is different from in. The out value of course, is the gen value first that is uh, included that is d 5 right and uh, then so that is d 6 sorry that is d 6 which is included and then we take the in value d 3 d 4 d 5 and remove the kill that is d 3. So, d 4 and d 5 will also be included in out. So, d 4 d 5 it implies that uh, d 3 cannot flow through b 3 which is very obvious because it is being redefined here a is being redefined, but uh, d 4 d 5 will obviously flow through b 3. So, that is what uh, out b 3 signifies. So, what comes out here is this definition and these two definitions which are coming out. The last one is uh, b 4. So, if you consider b 4 in of course, was phi as usual. Now, the in value of uh, b 4 is the union of the two outsets one coming along this direction and other coming along this direction. Out of b 3 is d 4 d 5 d 6 and the out of b 2 is uh, d 3 d 4 d 5. So, we get d 3 uh, in of in will be d 3 d 4 d 5 d 6 the union of the two. What about the outset? It includes d 7 because it is gen and then we take in and remove the kill part. So, if you remove the kill part d 4 goes out d 1 is extra which is immaterial. So, we include d 3 d 5 d 6 and d 7 as the outset. So, these are the four new values that have been computed for b 1 b 2 b 3 b 4 and uh, in doing so we have actually looked at the basic blocks in a particular order b 1 b 2 then b 3 and b 4. Actually we could have looked at the basic blocks in the reverse order also b 4 b 3 b 2 and b 1. Since we are going to iterate through the basic blocks in the control flow graph a number of times and make sure that none of the values of the in and out sets of any basic block uh, you know remain the same. The order in which we uh, visit the basic blocks is immaterial, but it so happens that uh, you know the even though the values do not change uh, values do not depend on the order of uh, traversal of the control flow graph the number of iterations required will definitely change uh, depending on the order in which we visit them. The heuristic uh, one of the heuristics which is used is to use a depth first search order we will discuss this a little later. So, assuming that we use a depth first search order the iterations converge to the fixed point value very quickly. So, this is the final uh, result I would encourage you to verify it uh, you know look at the this block this set of results and then apply the same data flow equations once more and then um, get these values ok. And after this values are reached uh, any number of iterations further will not give you any changes will not provide any changes. So, these are the fixed point values and these happen to be the reaching definitions for the various basic blocks. So, let us just take a look at them out b 1 is d 1 d 2 d 3 which is very clear. So, all these definitions reach this point out b 2 is d 2 d 3 d 4 d 5 d 6 d 4 d 5 are very clear then d 3 is also very clear it comes out of uh, this right. And then uh, d 6 is uh, some value which is defined here it goes through the loop and then comes back again. So, there are two definitions of uh, a one here and one here neither overtakes or overrides the other one. In the first iteration this is relevant 
and then onwards in some of the iterations if this path is taken then this a becomes relevant. So, both the definitions of a reach this point. Then out b 3 here for the basic block b 3 is d 4 d 5 d 6. So, d 6 is very clear d 4 d 5 also come out. Then finally, out b 4 is d 3 d 5 d 6 d 7. So, d d 7 is very clear d 6 is very clear d 4 d 5 uh, you know d 4 does not reach because i is redefined here, but d 5 definitely reaches the end of the basic block here. So, this is how the definitions uh, reach the end of the basic block. So, remember even though we have no idea of the execution path you know we, ta we take the definitions which come along all paths take a union and then say that these are the re, uh, definitions which reach this particular point. So, this is a conservative estimate because at uh, execution time exactly one path will be taken whereas, during static analysis time we are going to consider all the paths. So, now uh, it is time to look at the algorithm in a program like fashion. The algorithm is quite simple this is as I said an iterative algorithm. The first of all initialization for each block b do in b equal to phi and out b equal to gen b. So, that completes the initialization. Then to detect whether there has been a change in the computation of values we use a flag change equal to true initially and then we loop while change do. So, set change to false and then for each of the basic blocks apply the data flow equations in b equal to something compute it then uh, store the old value of uh, out and recompute the new value of out. So, if out has changed then you know changes uh, if out be not equal to old out that means out has changed then we reset change to true again and then loop once more. So, we keep doing this until none of the out values change. The reason why we are checking only the out and not the in is uh, out is dependent on in. So, if there is a change in in then it will automatically be reflected in the uh, change in out. If we had reversed these two equations out first and then in then we would have checked in here instead of uh, and stored uh, old in instead of old out. So, of course, there is nothing wrong in storing both old in and old out and checking them, but that is not really necessary. Now, we still have to look at the data structures uh, which are necessary to store the various data flow values. So, this iteration will go on until uh, there is no change and once there is no change we quit. So, we actually use uh, bit vectors for the uh, with one bit for each definition in the program. Let me show you an example. So, here the there are actually only 7 definitions in the whole program in the control flow graph. So, a bit vector of size 7 with 1 bit for each is sufficient to store all the definitions. So, the first bit always stores d uh, corresponds to d 1, second bit corresponds to d 2 etcetera etcetera. So, the position of the bit itself gives you the definition number. So, all our sets gen, kill, in and out will also be 7 bit uh, vectors bit vectors. So, for example, the set gen b 1 actually has d 1 d 2 d 3. So, it has once in the 3 places 1 d 1 d 2 d 3 and the rest of them as 0. The kill set has uh, you know uh, d 1 d 2 d 3 as uh, 0 and d 4 d 5 d 6 d 7 as 1s then in b was initialized to phi. So, this is and remains phi as I said. So, these are all zeros, and the out b 1 value d 1 d 2 d 3 is represented here. <coughs> so, this is how the so this is how the data flow values are stored as uh, bit vectors the same is true for this basic block this basic block and also this uh, last basic block. <coughs> the next data flow analysis problem that we are going to deal with 
is called as the available expressions computation. So, here this problem becomes a very important problem to perform the uh, <coughs> global common sub expression elimination uh, optimization. The sets of expressions constitute the domain of data flow values here. In the reaching definitions problem, it was the set of definitions. Here we are going to look at the sets of expressions and they constitute the domain of data flow values. This is a forward flow problem and the confluence operator is intersection. By the way, the confluence operator in the reaching definitions problem was the union operator. So, let me show you ah, this is here. So, we have uh, an equation for out in terms of in. So, as I said this determines the direction of the data flow and we have the confluence operator which is union here. Okay. Whenever we combine the values at a joint point in the control flow graph, we must use the confluence operator. <coughs> so, in the available expression computation problem, it is a forward flow with a confluence operator as uh, intersection. In the previous case, it was uh, union, here it is intersection. This will become clear very soon. Now, the schema for the data flow analysis requires the equations, we will provide the equations very soon and uh, it also requires uh, gen and kill sets. But before that, let us define what exactly is availability of an expression. <coughs> An expression x plus y is said to be available at a point p if every path not necessarily cycle free. So, we could go in cycles, okay. but what is important is the path must begin from the initial node of the control flow graph. So, from the initial node to p, so we must consider every path here. In the reaching definitions case, we considered any path, here we must consider every path from the initial node to p and it must evaluate the expression x plus y. So, and after the last such evaluation prior to reaching p, there are no subsequent assignments to either x or y. <coughs> the important point here is there must be you know a computation of x plus y from the initial node to p along every path that is number 1. And the other important point is after the last such computation modifications to x and y x or y should not happen. If you modify either x or y or both then the value of x plus y changes. So, therefore, changes to x plus x or y or both should not happen after the last computation of x plus y. Otherwise, the value of x plus y would have really changed. Then, so this is availability. Im most important, it must be along all paths, and after the last computation of x plus y, no changes to either x or y. What do we mean by killing an expression here? So, a block kills x plus y if it assigns or may assign to either x or y or both, and it does not subsequently recompute x plus y. So, the point is we have a computation of x plus y, then we have redefined uh, x let us say. If we recompute x plus y, then the block does not kill x plus y, but if it simply modifies x and then does not recompute x plus y, then it kills uh, x plus y. So, let me show you an example here. <coughs> here is 4 star i a computation, here is another 4 star i another computation and here there are two possibilities. One possibility is to go along you know it is not that both the blocks are present at the same time. I have just written the second block as an alternative in dotted lines. Okay. So, either this block is present or this block is present. So, if there is no assignment to i obviously, 4 star i will not get changed along this path at all. So, 
we can say it is available along this path and also this path. So, it is available along all paths at this point. And suppose we redefine uh, i, okay. So, we have defined 4 star i computed 4 star i here. Now, we have redefined i here, but then we also computed 4 star i again. So, in this case also 4 star i is available along this path, we have because we have recomputed 4 star i. 4 star i is available along this path, 4 star i is available along this path also. Remember, we are not considering looking at the exact value of 4 star i here. So, what we are saying is uh, whether we use 4 star i along this path or this path, we do not have to recompute it here that is all we are trying to say during the common sub expression elimination. We want to avoid computation of 4 star i here either by reusing this value or this value it really does not matter. But suppose there was no recomputation of 4 star i here right it was just a modification of i. Then this value 4 star this uh, expression 4 star i is not available along this path. Okay. So, we say 4 star i is not available at this point. What about the generation of x plus y? A block generates x plus y if it definitely evaluates x plus y and does not subsequently redefine either x or y or both. So, this is uh, very simple we just uh, compute the x plus y and then do not modify either x or y. Now, how do we compute uh, this gen and kill let us call them as e gen and uh, e kill. So, let us assume that the equations are you know the statements are of the form x equal to y plus z. We are trying to compute it for each one of the statements in the basic block. So, this must be done one statement at a time and then the effect of the entire basic block will be felt at the end. For the point q, let us assume that uh, the e gen is given. Obviously, at the end, uh, beginning of the basic block this will be empty. So, let the e gen for this point q be a. Now, we have the statement x equal to y plus z. So, what do we do? We act, uh, now, y plus z gets uh, uh, computed. So, it is actually generated by this statement. So, we do a equal to a union y plus z. Then x is being redefined here. So, all the uh, you know expressions involving x will have to be removed from a. So, we that is uh, the killing part. So, a equal to a minus all expressions involving x. At this point therefore, e gen p is the new value of a. So, this is how we compute e gen p and now if there is another statement uh, after this you know the effect of that statement will be computed exactly like this because e gen p is now available. How do you compute e, gil, e kill q? Again you are given e kill at this point. So, let us say that is a. Now, x equal to y plus z is the statement for which we have to compute the effect. So, now you know y plus z is being computed here. So, it is not killed it must be removed from kill even if it was killed before now it is being recomputed. So, we must remove it from kill. Now, x is being uh, redefined here. So, x kills all the expressions involving x. So, they will all be added to a. So, this is the complement of what we did here. Okay. So, a equal to a union all expressions involving x and at this point e, j, e kill of p will be the new value of a. So, this is how we actually compute the uh, gen and kill for each of the statements in the basic block they are all combined together and used. <coughs> so, the set of all expressions appearing on as the right hand side uh, assignments in the flow graph is assumed to be available. So, we must so this is our uh, universal set of all the expressions right, but then uh, you know what do you do with these 
we have used a bit vector representation for the reaching definitions and using bit vectors the union and uh, intersection operations are all trivial right. In the case of expressions we cannot directly use a bit vector what we do is uh, to store all the expressions using a hash table. So, we hash them and put them into a table and the index of that uh, hash table is used as the bit position. So, we make a bit vector out of these index positions of the various expressions and that will be used as our uh, bit vector for various union and intersection operations. So, we let us stop here uh, and then continue with the discussion of uh, available expressions problem in the next part of the lecture. Thank you.